Hey guys, this is Cross for Double Cross Games, and today I want to show you how I made this camera mover asset that follows along a spline. So the idea behind it is to create a camera that will follow a camera track uh, as closely as possible to the character without getting some snapping or uh, skips between splines so that if you are trying to get specific shots for your game you're able to actually do that without having jolts and jumps on your camera. I suppose I should start by telling you guys that I'm in the top-down template the only I didn't change really anything at all uh, I did add these camera movers so I could show you what this does which I should do right now so this is your notice how the camera is actually kinda of following him but if he goes up, the camera doesn't really follow him very well. And then when he goes to the other one, it switches to the other spline that I had set up in my two volumes. That's because so long as the character's inside these volumes that I put down, the camera will follow the spline that is associated with that influence point. So what you would do is you would set up your level with these influence points wherever you want your camera to be in control. Uh, and it's actually fairly easy to set up. So let's go ahead and, you know what, I'll just make a new one. So the first thing you're going to need is a new blueprint actor. We'll call this camera mover 2 because I already have one. And in your camera mover you're going to need a few things. You'll add a component spline, and this is going to be your track. And then you'll also want a box collision. And this is going to be your influence range, just to change it up a little. All right, now. You can go ahead and compile that and go over here into our event graph. You are not going to actually use the actor overlap. You're going to end up wanting to use the component overlap for the volume itself. And I'll show you why here in a moment. But before we do that, we'll start an event being in play. We want to get a reference to our actor, the guy that's going to be triggering the boxes. So that's going to be our player. So we'll do get player character all right and then from get player character we'll cast to in this case top down character but you cast to whatever your character is called then promote that to a variable so we can use him later character ref is what I always call it that's gonna be useful later and then we're going to want to know which camera asset is actually in control. So we are going to make a variable. We're going to call it active track. Now this is going to help us in a couple of ways. We're going to go ahead and expose that one on spawn so that we can go out into the, into the world and actually check a box to tell it which camera is going to be the active camera at the beginning. But by default, this is going to be false. We're just going to leave it like that. All right. So, selecting our influence range right here, you can come down to the events, and by default, you'll have an uncomponent begin overlap. Select that. And from the other actor pin, you're going to cast to in my case top-down character so what we're asking it is is the thing that overlapped my top-down character if it is true it'll execute this pin here so if it is true then we want that track to become the active track so we will set active track to true and then we're gonna go ahead and control C and we're going to select our influence range again and do on component end overlap. Control V to get my same things again. And I'm going to pull the other actor pin to 
object and link that together. And make sure you set this to false. All right, so that is going to be what tells our camera track that it is the one that is doing the controlling at that time. That way you can have multiple camera tracks and they're not all continuously trying to do the job. Just the one that is selected at that time. All right, so on event tick. Now, event ticks can get expensive. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a branch. We don't want this event tick to do anything unless it is our active track. If it is our active track, we're going to take delta seconds. We're going to promote them to a variable. So we're going to need delta seconds later. We don't want a spaghetti monster here. Now this is just setting a float, so it really isn't that expensive. So this is going to be delta And that's going to bother me, so I'll go ahead and make some reroute nodes by double clicking on the line. Those of you who don't know, that's very useful. Double click on the line to make that. All right. So if it is the active track, we will set this variable and then we will also do a few other really cool stuff, which is what's going to make this all work. All right, we're going to need to grab our character, get. And from our character, we want to get the camera. Now, top-down character, I didn't get to name the camera, so the name of the camera is camera one. That is the camera we're going to use. So back to our camera mover. So we drag out of it, get camera one. All right, this is the camera that is by default following the player around. And then from that camera, we're going to drag out, get world location. Make sure you actually do world location, um, because as the camera moves about the world, you want the position to update correctly. You don't want relative to the character. You want it world. All right, and we're going to promote this to a variable called current cam location. That way, we can keep track of where the camera is in the world in real time. All right, another thing we're going to need is we are going to need to tell the camera where to go. So we are going to, I don't like dragging multiple pins from the same thing, so we'll do it again. Get cam one. This prevents the spaghetti monster from getting too out of control if you just drag multiple copies of your reference. And then we want to set world location. So what this is going to do is it's going to actually, we're going to be setting the world location of our camera wherever we want. Then we're going to grab our spline track here and we're going to pull it out. And we are going to get, let's see if I remember, find there you go. All right, so we do find, and down here it's find location closest to world location. So we'll click that. Now, by default, it's going to give you local coordinate space. You want world. Pretty sure you want world. <laughs> kind of want all your, uh, all your locations to match, otherwise it starts getting wonky. We want the actor location. All right, character reference. Get actor location. There we go. That's what. All right. So now that we are telling it to find the location closest to the player, we want to also. We don't want the camera to snap to that location. If we do this, the camera will actually snap to that location and we could make the camera skip pretty, pretty horribly. So what we'll do is we're going to take the current camera location and we're going to interpolate. So we drag out and type interp. And you get v interp 2. Notice that there was one that says constant. Don't pick that one. Pick v interp 2. 
Then you put our pins together like this. And then we'll take our delta seconds variable that we so fancily set. And normally, you're probably going to want to promote this interpolation speed to a variable so that you can control it as well as you can. This is going to, this is going to control how fast your camera moves as it tries to interpolate between these two locations. It's very convenient if you turn it into a variable and kind of play with it in real time. Uh, you can expose it so that you can mess with it on the actual editor. So if you set it like this, that'll make it so that in, in the real world outside, you can just click on the asset and uh, change the speed. Now, I have all these cameras set up, right? So what I'll do is I'll take my little camera mover that I already have set up here. This is already ready to go, by the way. Take my little camera mover that I already had set up, and I'm going to uncheck the active track and grab my camera mover that I just created, camera mover number two. And we'll go ahead and try to set this up. Keep in mind, I'm not a cameraman, so my camera skills are, are bad at best. <laughs> but you guys will get the idea. This is actually, uh, I made this really, really quick for my partner who is doing a lot of the uh, camera work and the uh, texturing and stuff, setting up the shots for the actual game. And he was, hope he was asking for a camera that he can set up that will follow the character but only up to a certain point so that he could have very specific shots now, so what you do, so what we want to do is to set this up. So you drop the asset, you can set it up, set up the volume in the area you want the player to be uh, influenced by that. Then you select the track, then you should be able to grab the track and move it wherever you want. Now, wherever this track is, is where the camera is going to move. So this is the part that I am pretty bad at. <laughs> but just to show you guys that this is set up, correctly. I will go ahead and set something up that is going to be super crazy. And so ideally what will happen is when my character moves into this volume, the camera is going to slide from its current location way up here to that first spot and then it's going to move diagonal away as I move up and down. So let's, uh, let's give that a try. Eh? All right, so this is the normal camera, and let's move over. Oh, yeah, there it goes. And notice how the camera doesn't follow me if I go up to the right because I had set up the spline going up to the left. So the camera will follow me up and down that spline as best as it can. So, and of course, again, I'm pretty bad at setting up cameras, but the, uh, the splines can be bent by selecting the red pin and you can add arches to them and the camera will follow those arches as best as it can but that's a little bit outside of the scope of this uh, hopefully let me show you guys the code one more time uh, it's all very simple I hope you guys uh, get good use out of this and if you have any questions or run into any problems uh, feel free to write it down in the comments and we'll uh, go ahead and make sure that we make any improvements that you guys want onto this alright guys that all about wraps it up thanks for watching